So today we're going to look at lesson 2-7, which is implicit differentiation. So before I get to the notes that you printed out, um, I want to explain what implicit differentiation is just briefly by doing some pre-examples. So let's just review a little bit. I'm going to give you three small examples of reviewing finding a derivative. So example A, I'm going to find the derivative of 3x squared. Technically, the notation is we're going to find the derivative with respect to x. We don't normally write that because you were taught to just do 2 times 3 was 6 x and then we reduced this exponent by 1. So we got 6x to the first, which we don't really need to write to the first. But the question happens, what if we're not differentiating something with a variable of x? What are we going to do? Because we're not always going to be finding derivatives of just something with an x. So we have to use what's called implicit differentiation. So for my next one, for B, let's look at find the derivative of 2y to the third. We're essentially going to use the same power rule, but notice that here, when we're finding the derivative with respect to x, we don't normally use this notation, but we are for this purposes here. Notice here that the variables agree, and so we just took use this simple power rule and just took the derivative and got this. But here, the variables don't agree. So I can't just take the simple power rule. Instead, I have to use the chain rule. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply this to whatever's outside. So we do indeed get 6y to the second. So I multiplied 3 to the 2 and got the 6. And I reduced the 3 by 1 and got 2. So that's your normal power rule right? Your simple power rule. But then we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. Well, we technically did that here. Because think about this. 2 times 3 is 6. We reduce that by 1. And then the derivative of x, just plain x, is 1. So times 1. And technically, the derivative of just x is written as dx dx. Well, dx over dx is just 1. So your actual derivative is 6x. We just kind of skip this step because why have to do that for everything? But we can't skip that here because the derivative of y, which is the inside, remember the chain rule says find the derivative of the outside and then find the derivative of the inside. Well, this right here, this y is our inside. So the derivative of the y would be written very similar to what we wrote here. We took the derivative of x with respect to x. So we're going to take the derivative of y with respect to x. Notice that it looks different. These are different. I can't just cancel this out. So this whole thing ends up being our derivative. Essentially, when you take the derivative of something that's not x, you're going to find the derivative like you normally would. So 3 times 2 is 6, y to the second. So there's your normal derivative. But then you're going to tack on this dy dx, the derivative of y with respect to x. It's weird, but that's what your answer here is going to be. And these are just expressions. So what happens if it becomes a little bit more complicated? What if I have a product rule going on? And I have both an x and a y. So we're going to find the derivative with respect to x. So in this case, I'm going to use the product rule. So I'm going to take the first and multiply it by the derivative of the second, and the second and multiply it by the derivative of the first. And I'm going to add those together. So I'm going to take the first, which is x, 
and multiply it by the derivative of the second. Well, the second is y squared. So the derivative of y squared is 2y, so times 2y. And then we have to take the derivative of y itself. So remember, anytime we take the derivative of something that's not x, we have to tack on this dy dx. So again, we took the first, here's the first, and we multiplied by a derivative of the second. So the derivative of y squared is 2y dy dx. So this whole thing here is the derivative of y squared. Then we're going to add to that the second, which is y squared, and multiply it by the derivative of the first. Well, the derivative of x is just 1. So we end up with, if we multiply and simplify all this, so I'm going to put these together, put the variables in alphabetical order. So we end up with 2xy times dy dx plus y squared times 1 is just y squared. Now, a lot of people will take this dy dx and just replace it with y prime because that means the derivative of y. And that's what this notation is saying. Whatever the derivative of y is, that's what we would put there. So you could, and most of you will prefer this, you could write your answer as 2xy and then instead of dy dx just write y prime and I oftentimes like to put a little multiplication there and then plus y squared. So this or this is the derivative of xy squared. So these are just um, expressions. What is going to happen if we actually have an equation? How do we take the derivative of that? And that's what we're going to explore for the rest of our notes. So I'm actually going to go to the notes that I gave you. So the topic here says 3-2. It's really not. You're going to change that to 2-7. So up until now, we've just been differentiating things that have only x's in it. So as I kind of implied in our pre-examples, if you will, we're going to start to differentiate things that have both x's and y's in them, so it kind of complicates things a little bit. Um, so here's some basic facts to consider. You have to realize that when you're differentiating, you're, it's always taking place with respect to x, always. That's what that denominator dx means. When you differentiate terms involving x alone, you can just differentiate it as usual. So nothing has changed there. And then when you differentiate terms that have y in it, you have to apply the chain rule. So if I were you, I would highlight this right here. Um, because you're always assuming that y can be differentiated in terms of x. So that's our assumption. We don't know what y is, but we do assume that we can at some point differentiate it in terms of x. So... Um, as I showed you in the previous pre-examples, if I were to take the derivative of y, the proper notation would be the derivative with respect to x of y. Well, I don't know what y is, but using the chain rule, we would take the derivative of y, which is 1, and we're going to multiply it by dy dx because that means the derivative of y with respect to x. So the derivative of y, just a single y, 100% of the time, is going to be dy dx. The derivative with respect to x of x is just going to be 1 because the derivative of x is 1. See how these two variables agree? So therefore, you can just take the derivative as normal. These variables don't agree, so you're going to have to tack on that dy dx. All right, so here are our guidelines for actually solving equations using implicit differentiation. So you're going to differentiate both sides with respect to x. You have got to obey that chain rule. So that's super important. Obey that chain rule. That's really what it's all about. And then it, in, in these notes it says multiplying by dy dx. Basically what we're doing is taking the derivative of both sides. And um, one of the ways that some people will look at it is to just multiply both sides of the equation by this dy dx. It's not a fraction. It's a notation that says take the derivative of what's following. And I'll get into that as we get into example one. 
then once you do that, you're going to isolate any terms that have a dy dx in them on the left side of the equation. So I prefer the left side. And then every other term that doesn't have a dy dx is going to go on the right side. And then we're going to factor out the dy dx from each of those terms on the left and divide both sides of the equation by what's left over. It will make more sense when we get to example one. And then you will have solved for dy dx. So let's look at example one. I'm going to make this really big so you can see it and somewhat straight. Good enough for government work. Okay. Now this particular one says find the derivative of y with respect to x for this equation at this point. This is going to come into play at the very end of our work. So for right now, I'm going to ignore the ordered pair 3, 2. But that is an xy value, and so you can put that up here. But for right now, we are going to take the derivative with res of y with respect to x of both sides. So the left side is xy plus y, and it equals the right side, which is 8. We're going to take the derivative of y with respect to x again. All right, so essentially, this is going to get distributed, if you will, to everything inside here. In other words, I'm going to take the derivative of xy, and I'm going to take the derivative of y, and I'm going to take the derivative of 8. Notice here that not all these variables agree. You have this y here that doesn't agree with this x. So, and furthermore, this is a product. So in this particular one, we're going to have to actually find, use the product rule. So I'm going to use a different color. So for this one, I'm going to use the product rule. So the first, which is x, times the derivative of the second. Remember, the derivative of y is dy dx plus the second times the derivative of the first. Well, the derivative of x is 1. So this represents the derivative of xy. Then I'm going to say plus the derivative of y. So for this one, I'm going to use color green. The derivative of y is just dy dx equals. Now we're going to take the derivative of 8. And remember, the derivative of any constant is just 0. So we're just going to make that a 0. So that's step 1, which is taking the derivative of both sides. Step two is to make sure only your terms that have a dx dy, and that's these two right here are on the left, everything else is going to get moved to the right. So I'm going to rewrite this so it's a little prettier. So for the first term, I have x dy dx. And if you prefer, at this point, let's go ahead, and you won't see Gene Adams doing this. Gene Adams is the creator of this particular note sheet, but I think for y'all it'd be easier. We're going to replace dy dx with y prime. So it'll be easier for you to deal with, um, but only dy dx gets replaced with y prime. So then we have plus y, then we have plus dy dx, I'm going to replace with y prime equals zero. All right, so that's much nicer. So any term that has a dy dx in it. So that's this term here and this term here will stay on the left. So I am going to move this y term over here to the right hand side. So I'm going to subtract it. I have to use proper algebra. So I have x y prime plus y prime is equal to a negative y. Remember y prime and negative y completely different. y prime means the derivative of y with respect to x. Now, the next step, the third step, is to factor out this y prime from each of the terms. So I got a y prime out in front, and then you're going to divide each of those terms by y prime. So if I divide these by y prime, I get just an x. And then y prime divided by y prime is a positive 1 equals a negative y. Then divide both sides by this x plus 1, because I want to solve the left side 
for y prime and divide this side by x plus 1. And so the derivative of y with respect to x, which is y prime, is equal to negative y over x plus 1. Normally we would be done, but remember they want to know at this particular point. So normally this would be the answer, but at this point we are going to substitute in our x and y values. Okay, so my x value is 3, so that gets subbed here, and then my y value is 2, so that gets subbed here. So I get a negative 2 divided by divided by 4. Sorry, I had a phone call. And then that's going to give you negative 1 half for your final answer. All right, let's look at example 2. So for example 2, very similar. Um, we are going to start by taking the derivative of both sides. So to shorten up my work here, because we did on the other one, I'm going to take the derivative of this side. So dy dx, and then the derivative of this side, dy dx. So if the denominator here, if this x matches with all the variables here, you can just take the derivative as normal. But if this x doesn't match with all the variables here, you have to use that chain rule. And remember, the derivative of y is going to be that dy dx. So the derivative of x is just simply 1. Then we're going to have to take the derivative of this, which is a constant and a product. So we're going to have to use the product rule. So right here. So I prefer to take that constant as a 3 and I'm going to pull that out in front of our product rule. So I'm just going to find the derivative of xy. So the derivative of the first, which is 1, so the derivative of x is 1 times the second plus the derivative of the second, which is the derivative of y is dy dx, times the first, which is x. So this right here is the derivative of xy. We are going to have to distribute the 3. Um, and I also have to find the derivative of this. So let me finish that one. So let me get the next derivative. So this one right here is going to be that minus 2, which is a constant. So there's your minus 2 that's a constant. Then we're going to take the derivative of y squared. So the first thing we do is just take the derivative of y squared as if it were an x. So it would be 2y. So the derivative of y squared is 2y. But then remember we have to tack on that dy dx anytime we take the derivative of a y. And then equals the derivative of a constant 2 is 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute this 3, and anywhere there's a dy, dx, I'm going to replace it with y prime. So here we go. 1 plus 3 times 1 times y. So 1 times y is y times 3 is just 3y. And then this is going to be y prime. So I'm going to put the x in front of that y prime. So I'm going to have 3 times x. And instead of the dy dx, I'm going to replace that with y prime. And then finally, I've got negative 2 times 2, which is 4, times y. And I'm going to replace this with y prime. So I get negative 4y. Instead of the dy dx, I'm going to replace that with y prime equals 0. So now anything that has a y prime in it, which is this one, and this one, I want to keep on the left side. Everything else, all of these, are going to be moved over to the right side by subtracting them or adding their opposite. So I end up with 3x y prime minus 4y y prime equals negative 3y and a negative 1. I just subtracted those. You can put them in whatever order you want to. We will probably factor out the negative 
when we're done, but we'll have to see. So then I'm going to factor out that y prime from the left side. You're left with 3x minus 4y equals negative 3y minus 1. And then we're going to divide both sides by this 3x minus 4y. and then those will cancel, and you end up with y prime equaling. Now, you could have this be your answer, or a lot of mathematicians hate having both of these negative, negatives here, so they'll factor out the negative and push it downstairs here. So if I factor out the negative from here and push it downstairs here, that means all these signs change and you end up with 4y minus 3x. So you could end up with an answer that's 3y plus 1 over 4y minus 3x instead. So because I like that answer better, that's how I'll write it. But just so that you know, that's what they did. They factored out, or they, meaning I, I factored out a negative 1 from here and then pushed it downstairs. Remember, a fraction, a fraction's value that's negative can either be in the numerator, in the denominator, or hanging out to the side. We never like the negative hanging out to the side. Typically we like to put it up here, but in this case it makes a prettier fraction if we put it down here. Just saying. All right, so because we have this um, ordered pair right here with an x and a y value of 1 and 1, they want us to substitute that in. So I've got 3 times something plus 1 and then 4 times something minus 3 times something. So our x value is 1, and our y value is also 1. So it ends up giving us 3 plus 1 up top, which is 4. 4 minus 3 on the bottom, which is 1, gives us a final value of 4 for this answer. Let's go to example 3. So I'm going to make example three really big and straight. There we go. Okay, so we're just going to do more of the same. So hopefully you'll start to get better the more of these that we do. So I'm going to take this side, this whole side, and find the derivative of that side. And I'm going to take this whole side and find the derivative of y with respect to x on this side. So. Anything that has a y, we're going to tack on a dy dx. Anything that doesn't, it's just your normal derivative. So the derivative of y cubed is 3y squared, and then we have to tack on that dy dx. The derivative of 5y squared is a positive 5 times 2 is 10y, and then we have to tack on the dy dx. The derivative of negative 5y is negative 5, and we have to tack on the dy dx. But the derivative of negative x squared is just negative 2x. No need to tack on dy dx because its variable is x. And then finally, the derivative of negative 4, a constant, is 0. So then our terms that have dy dx in it are these ones. We're going to leave those on the left side. We're going to move this term right here to the right by adding it. And then in addition to that, I'm going to change as I rewrite it all of these terms into y prime. So I have 3y squared y prime plus 10y y prime minus 5 y prime, and then I'm adding the 2x, so I get equals 2x. Then we want to factor out that y prime from the left, and we're left with 3y squared plus 10y minus 5 equals 2x, and then we're going to divide both sides by the 3y squared plus 10y minus 5 So, y prime is equal to 
2x divided by 3y squared plus 10y minus 5. So much easier the second time around. Okay, so if you're feeling comfortable, you could try to do this one on your own, but I am going to look at what happens when we have e to the x, because I want to remind you what is the derivative of e to the x. We've done that before. And then um, examples five and six involve trigonometry, so trig and natural logs. So here we go. Um, number four. So for number four, we're finding y prime, which of course is the same as finding dy dx. So you can see that there's this change in no, no, notation. It doesn't matter which one you use. I prefer y prime, you all know that. So we're gonna find the derivative of this side and the derivative of this side. Three pi, remember pi looks like a variable, but it's actually a number. So three times pi is just a number. So the derivative of three pi is zero. So to find the derivative of the left side, y times e to the x, we have to use the product rule. So I am going to take the first, which is y, and multiply it by the derivative of the second. Remember the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. So it looks like it doesn't change at all. So I took the first and I multiplied by the derivative of the second, then plus the second times the derivative of the first. Well, the derivative of y is one times dy dx. So instead of dy dx, we're gonna use y prime. And then equals derivative of three pi is zero. So we get we want to keep just this term on the left and we are going to move this term over here. So I get e to the x, y prime, is equal to negative y, e to the x. Then we're gonna divide both sides by e to the x, e to the x, Notice that e to the x cancels here and here. So y prime is equal to simply negative y. Okay, let's look at example five. All right, this time we're gonna differentiate with a trig value. So you might wanna go back to your notes and um, review what the derivative is of sine, cosine, and tangent, and um, recall those. Now, on this particular one, they've written it cosine of xy. That means the angle measure is xy. You should really put that in parentheses so that you realize that the inside of the trig function is xy. That's going to require the chain rule. Remember, when we find the derivative of trig functions, we use the chain rule. So we find the derivative of the outside, so we'll find the um, derivative of cosine, which is negative sine, and then we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. Well, that's xy, so we have to use our chain rule on that, So, or our product rule on that. <sighs> it's going crazy. All right, so let's start off with finding the derivative of the outside on the left. So I'm going to take and I'm going to find y prime here and y prime of here of both sides. Or you could put dy over dx. Either one, doesn't matter. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine of the xy. So we have to keep that angle measure the same. Then times the derivative of the inside. So to get the derivative of the inside, I'm going to take the derivative of the first, which is 1, times the second, which is y, and add the derivative of the second, which is y prime dy dx, times the first. Okay? And that finishes that. Then 
on the other side. So the other side is not a constant this time. So I'm going to take the derivative of x, which is just 1, plus the derivative of 3y. So the derivative of 3y is just 3 times y prime. So let's put this all together. I'm going to actually distribute my sign into here and here. So I get, and I'd like to put anything that's not a sign, like this is 1 times y, which is y. y times all of this, I'm going to put in front here. So y times the negative becomes a negative y times this. So negative y sine of xy. And then, before I decide on my sign, this is um, xy prime. So I'm going to actually put the x first because I don't like that derivative of y first. So I'm going to write this as xy prime times a negative. So I've got plus, or actually a minus, minus x. And then I'm going to write that y prime in red so we can see it sine of xy equals 1 plus 3. And I'm going to put that y prime in red so we can see it. So this time we actually have a y prime on both sides. So we're going to have to keep this one on this side and we're going to have to, or we can move it over here, right? And keep it with this one and then we could move the one onto the other side. So let's go ahead and do that and then we'll flip sides because I would really like to have my um, y primes on the left. But for our purposes with negatives, it'll probably work out nicer. So I'm gonna keep the negative y, whoops, I want my pen. So I'm gonna keep the negative y sine of xy on the left. I am going to move this one over here by making by subtracting it so I get a negative 1 equals and then on the right side I'm gonna add this to the right side so I've got 3 y prime plus uh, x y prime sine of xy so I don't like my y primes on the right, so I'm going to flip these sides and move the y primes on the left. And I'm also going to factor out this y prime while I'm at it. So y prime times 3 plus x sine of xy. I guess I should make those brackets. Equals, and on the right-hand side, um, I don't know, typically we like the constants first, or uh, it doesn't matter what order, but I'm gonna put the one minus y sine of xy. I can put it in that order. You can have the negative y sine of xy first if you want, it doesn't really matter. So then to solve for y prime, we're gonna divide both sides by three plus x sine of xy to both sides. All right, so these are gonna cancel here. And we're left with y prime equals negative one minus y sine of xy, all divided by three plus x sine of xy. Now, I know that um, in one of the past examples, we factored out a negative from here and pushed it downstairs, but factoring out a negative up here and pushing it downstairs doesn't really make for a nicer fraction, so we choose not to here. I mean, you could, but it doesn't really change anything, so I choose not to. So here is our final answer for number five. All right, so let's look at six. Where'd six go? Oh, there it is. So let's look at six. We're gonna differentiate a natural log. So again, they didn't really write this, but this should be in parentheses. It's the natural log of xy. So your argument is xy, your angle measure, xy. And then equals the sine of x. So we have to take the derivative of both sides. 
So I'm going to find the derivative of this and then the derivative of this. All right. So before we find the derivative of the natural log of xy, it would probably be easier knowing what we know previously if I split this apart first. So before I take the natural log, I've got y prime times, and then I'm going to expand this using our knowledge of expanding of log functions. So when two things are being multiplied, we expand by adding. So we get the natural log of x plus the natural log of y. It would make our work a whole lot easier to do that expansion. Equals Okay, now I'm ready to take the derivative of both sides. So if you recall, the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x, right? 1 over the box. And then typically with the natural log, we typically, you know, to find the derivative of the natural log function, we take um, 1 over the box times the derivative of the box. Well, the derivative of the box is 1, so it's 1 over x times 1, which is 1 over x. It's going to be a little bit different here because our box is not x this time. Jojo, stop. Okay, so the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x, but the derivative of the natural log of y would be 1 over the box, so the box is y, so 1 over y times the derivative of the box, which is dy dx, which I was using y prime, but I'm going to switch it back to that in a minute, equals, then the derivative of the sine of x, remember, is just cosine of x. And we're almost there. So I'm going to get the term that has my dy dx which is right here, keep that on the left, so I'm gonna move the one over x by subtracting it. So I get one over y times y prime is equal to the cosine of x, and I'm subtracting that one over x. Then to solve, normally we would solve by you know dividing both sides by one over y, but who wants to divide by a fraction? So in this case, it'd be easiest to solve by multiplying this side by y, and then to multiply this side by y. The good news is, and then those are gonna cancel, the good news is y prime is equal to, I'm not gonna make you multiply out that y into the parentheses, you can just leave it like this. That's good enough for government work. Okay. The last problem that we're going to do is we are going to find, I'm going to have to make this a little smaller, we are going to find the equation of the tangent line at a particular ordered pair. So at negative 1, 2. So at negative 1, 2, that would be right about here. So we want the tangent line that's gonna go in this direction because that's what the tangent line would look like. And so I can kind of guess at that, but remember the uh, slope of that tangent line is equal to the first derivative of the function. So that's what we're gonna end up doing first. So I'm gonna ignore the negative one, two for right now. And we're just gonna find the derivative of this function. So I'm gonna find y prime of this side and y prime of this side, all right? So the derivative of two x squared is 2x. And then the derivative of xy is going to be minus, and I'm going to do this in parentheses. So the derivative of the first, so I'm just going to find this one right here using the product rule. Derivative of the first, derivative of x is 1 times the second, which is y, plus the derivative of the second, which is y prime, times the first, which is x. So that is the derivative. We're gonna subtract that in a minute. And then plus 
the derivative of y squared is 2y times y prime. And then on the other side of the equation, the derivative of 7 is 0. So let's uh, clean this up a little bit. So we have 2x minus 1 times y is y minus, um, oh, that's a y prime. So I want to do x y prime. Couldn't read my writing there for a minute. Plus, two y y prime equals zero. Then I want to keep um, these on the left side, and I'm going to move these over to the right side. When I keep these on the left side, I'm also going to factor out that y prime just to save ourselves a little bit of room. So y prime times, and I don't want the negative first, so I'm gonna put this one first and this one second. So I'm gonna put the two y minus the x because it looks prettier. Equals, and then I'm gonna subtract the two x and add the y to both sides. So because I'm adding the y, I prefer to write that first because again, it's prettier. And then to solve for our derivative, we're gonna divide by two y minus x and two y minus x. So then we will finish up here. That means that the slope of our tangent line, remember, is equal to our first derivative. And so in this case, it's equal to y minus two x over 2y minus x equals. Now the reason why I put the equals there is remember that they gave us this ordered pair here. So we need to find the value of the slope at this point. So this is our x and this is our y. So I'm going to replace our y and our x with their respective values. So our y is two, and our x is negative one, and our y is two, and our x is negative one. So this gives me two plus two is four, over two plus one, or four plus one is five. So the value of the slope of our tangent line is four fifths. So, this was the equation of our tangent line, but this is the value of the slope of that line. So they want us to find the equation of the normal line. Okay, oh, we actually have to find the equation of the tangent line. So here's how we're gonna find the equation of the tangent line. So remember, we're gonna use y minus y sub one equals m times x minus x sub one. So y minus my y sub one is our value of two that they gave us, and then equals our slope that we just found is the four fifths, so four fifths times x minus, and then we're going to put in a negative one here for x, so it really is gonna end up being x plus one. So the equation for our tangent, I'll talk about the normal equation in a minute. So tangent line, is equal to, and I'm going to, I'm gonna make it easy on you. I'm just gonna add the two outside over here, just because once we get to calculus, we really don't care that much. So y is equal to four fifths, that's our slope, times, instead of x minus a negative one, we have x plus one, and then we're gonna add that two to both sides. So this is the equation of our tangent line, and then for our normal line, it's pretty simple to find. The normal line, which you haven't come across before, is perpendicular to our tangent line. So go all the way back to algebra, algebra one and also algebra two, the line that's tangent, so if this slope is four fifths, the tangent slope to that should be the opposite sign and the reciprocal. So the slope to our normal line should be negative five fourths. 
So we're going to be looking at exactly the same points, but instead of 4 fifths, we're going to use negative 5 fourths. Just flip it and change the sign. Times x plus 1 plus 2. So they're going to look very similar. And how do these end up graphing? It's going to be hard to graph on this little dinky line here um, because I don't have enough points. But I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4 to left 1, 3, 4, 5. So I might be like out to here. So there's my tangent line. And then my normal line is going to be perpendicular. So um, down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's going to look like it's going right about there. So that's your normal line. And then you can see the tangent line. So they should appear perpendicular to each other because they are. And that's it. So you're going to practice that in your homework. So please text me with questions.